So we definitely get a lot of uh, questions about soil tests this time of year. So it's a very common time of year for both farmers and home gardeners to start bringing in soil samples to the county extension offices. So starting to receive a lot of questions, uh, a lot of questions about lawn care, a lot of questions about home gardens. And a soil test is a really great way to start understanding some of the limitations that might exist with your soil and some of the things that you might need to do to address those issues. So we're gonna just touch briefly about some of the information in your soil test report. So if you're thinking about soil testing, it's the best way to check the nutrient status of your soil, uh, assess your soil pH and organic matter levels. It's also the best way to find out what you need to apply to support plant health and vigor. It'll also give you information about your CEC, which I'll touch on a little bit more because this might affect the timing of your fertilizer applications. You'll receive fertility and pH adjustment recommendations for specific planting. So you can get recommendations for your lawn, for your vegetable garden, for your azaleas. It's also important to minimize environmental impact. So uh, we often hear about issues with fertilizer and pollution, and we often associate these with um, big agricultural operations, but uh, home lawn care and landscape maintenance actually plays a really big role in nutrient pollution. So we want to know what we need for our plants to grow and we want to apply that and, and we don't want to apply any more because it could end up running off into our streams and rivers. If you're going to get a soil test, it's important to get an appropriate sample. So it's best to take 8 to 12 subsamples at about 0 to 6 inches deep. You do want to sample problem areas separately. Remove any plant material such as turf or leaves and air dry the soil and then you'll take those 8 to 12 subsamples, mix them well, and then you'll bring about two cups to the county extension office which we can send to the lab. So areas that are under different management such as lawns should be sampled separately from vegetable beds and soils that are notably different in color and texture should be sampled separately as well. It's important to label your samples and draw a map of your yard for reference. It's easy to get them back and not remember where they came from. So let's go ahead and take a look at a soil test report. So this is what you'll get back in your lawn and garden soil test when you submit it. So let's kind of walk through this here. On the left hand side, we have actual values in pounds per acre as well as our pH value in organic matter percentages. On the right hand side, we have our relative nutrient and pH values that give you an idea of where those ratings stand. Down at the bottom, we have our fertilizer and limestone recommendations and these for lawn and garden sample are all in pounds per thousand square feet. I'll always like to take a look at the pH and the organic matter first to just give me a rough idea of, of what's going on in the soil. You'll notice at the bottom that you can select up to three crops. So this homeowner submitted a sample for azaleas. And as you might know, azaleas are a strong acid loving crop. So if we move across our recommendations here, we actually have zero nitrogen and zero phosphorus. Our organic matter level is 18.2%. That's a very high organic matter and that will provide all the nitrogen that your crops need. And if we look at the phosphorus, we have a very high relative rating of phosphorus. So we don't need any phosphorus. Potassium, however, is pretty low. So we do have a potassium recommendation of 0.5 pounds per thousand square feet. Potassium sulfate would be one way that you could apply that uh, potassium fertilizer. The important thing to note on the soil test is the sulfur recommendation. We have a pH value of 6.7, but we're trying to plant strong acid loving crops. So we need to apply some sulfur to get the pH down to an appropriate level. Sulfur should be applied at least six months in advance and incorporated the soil prior to establishing acid loving crops. It takes some time for this stuff to work. So we wanna give it some time, especially if we're investing a lot of money in things like blueberries or azaleas. You'll notice that there's no lime recommendation. Lime would be applied if we needed to raise the pH. And this is the CEC that I talked about earlier. This is the cation exchange capacity. And most of the time you'll see these in range from 10 to 20, somewhere in that range. If you have a CEC value of below 10, this indicates a sandy soil texture. So nitrogen and potassium will leach through the sandy soil much easier than they would in a clay soil. So nitrogen and potassium applications should be broken up into several smaller applications due to the leaching potential in sandy soils. 
You'll notice below the azaleas, there's perennial bedding plants. Same thing here, no nitrogen, no phosphorus, a small amount of potash. But for the perennial bedding plants, we have zero sulfur and zero lime because our pH is in good shape for those plants selected. Let's take a look at this soil test report. This soil test report was submitted for fescue, bluegrass, and rye. The first thing that, that I notice is the pH is very, very low. Organic matter values are pretty good at 4%. So with fescue and bluegrass, we want to get the pH into a better level. And we know that most plants like to be somewhere between a pH of 6 and 7. You'll notice the lime recommendation is very high, 225 pounds per thousand square feet. But it's important to take a look at some of the comments below because we don't want to apply all that lime at once. With limestone, you don't want to apply more than 50 pounds per thousand square feet when applying to existing lawns. We want to break these applications up every six months. So this soil test report, it would actually take multiple years to get this 225 pounds of lime applied to the soil. You'll also notice there's some other notes down here for establishment of fescue, how much nitrogen you need, and when to apply. Unless otherwise noted, you'd use calcium carbonate lime. Most of the time when you go to the hardware store or garden center, they'll just have a bag that says lime on it. And nine out of 10 times, that's calcium carbonate lime. There is dolomitic lime as well, but your soil test report will make in the notes here to tell you if you need to get dolomitic lime. Be sure to check out the MU lawn maintenance calendar. It talks through a lot of these different fertilization steps and the timing of those different activities. You might be asking, well, I don't know how big my lawn is. Well, we have this MU lawn fertilizer calculator and it can help you find the square footage of your lawn as well as guide you on how much fertilizer to apply. So if you don't know the square footage of your lawn, you can click here and it will take you to a Google map developers and it'll actually allow you to pull up your address and you can actually draw a box around your front and back lawn and it'll give you up here, it says 3,163 feet. So that's a really easy way to get that information. And then after you have the square footage of your lawn, you can input the pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet that your soil test recommends, as well as the fertilizer bag that you might have in your shed or that you're looking to purchase. And when we input that information down at the bottom, it'll tell us we need eight pounds of selected fertilizer to cover our 2000 square foot lawn. So a lot of great information. That tool is very handy and makes uh, doing those calculations very simple. In terms of soil testing, your soil samples can be dropped off at your local extension office. You can just Google your county name on MU Extension. For more details, you can search MU Soil Testing. We also have compost testing, as well as lead testing and some other services. It's best done at the same time every year, preferably in the fall. And soil testing is recommended every two to three years.